Okay, let me read my scripture uh, for you. Um, it's found in, in, in Psalms uh, 16 and verse number two. It says, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee. Now, that's the King James Version. And that's kind of a bit difficult to understand. What does he mean? When he says, my goodness extendeth not to thee. So I looked it up in different translations. And I think I got a better understanding of what is mentioned here in Psalms chapter 16 and verse number two. Here's another translation. It says, I have said, only you are my Lord. Every good thing I have is a gift from you. Every good thing I have is a gift from you. Well, that's amazing. You mean that every good thing in your life is a gift from God? Every good thing that happens in your life, all goodness is a, a, a gift from God? That means there's no goodness in your life apart from God? That's exactly what it means. When we get this understanding You'll praise God and thank God for every good thing that has happened to you in your past, every good thing that is taking place now, and every good thing that will take place in the future. And you'll be thankful because you realize no good thing comes to you apart from God. No good thing comes to us apart from God. What an amazing concept. Um, it says, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. That's another translation. Apart from you, I have no good thing. <clears throat> hmm. well, I think about my wife. The Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. Uh, this is my 45th year of marriage. I was married at the age of 21. My wife was 19. And she has been a good thing for me for 45 years. Well, that's not apart from God. God gave her to me as a gift. He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. That was God's favor to give me a good wife. And I'm thankful for that every day of my life. We just celebrated our 45th anniversary. She's been a blessing. Um, it's been a great, great 45 years, and I thank God for that. I, I thank God, and I, I give God praise for that. That wasn't accidental. That was not something I came up with. That was not something I could have done apart from God. Apart from God, again, I have no good thing. That's Psalms 16 in verse number two. This verse is a profound declaration of faith and dependency on God. Um, here, are some of the key points on this verse. Number one, God is sovereign. The psalmist begins by addressing God directly, acknowledging in him as my Lord. This personal address signifies a deep and personal relationship with God, recognizing his authority and lordship over his life. Number two, God is the exclusive source of goodness. God is the exclusive source of goodness. The phrase, apart from you, I have no good thing, emphasizes that all that is good in the psalmist's life is attributed to God. This statement reflects the belief that true goodness and blessings are derived solely from God. And without him, there would be nothing good. Number three, dependence on God. This verse highlights the psalmist's total dependence on God. It acknowledges that without God's presence and provision, life lacks true goodness and meaning. This dependence is not seen as a weakness, but as a recognition of God's all-sufficiency and the psalmist's trust in him. Number four, contrast with self-sufficiency. By declaring that apart from God, 
there is no good thing, the psalmist reflects the notion of self-sufficiency in a world where people often seek fulfillment and goodness through their own efforts or material possessions. This verse re redirects the focus to God as the ultimate source of all that is good. And then number five, expression of, of gratitude implicit in this verse is a sense of gratitude. The psalmist is not merely making a factual statement, but is expressing a heartfelt appreciation for God's goodness in his life. It is an acknowledgement that everything of value comes from God. And then finally, it's an invitation to reflection. The reader, for the reader, this verse invites reflection on the source of goodness in their own lives. It challenges individuals to consider where they find their sense of good and to recognize that the role of God in providing those blessings. It's an encouragement for us to trust God, to place trust in him by recognizing that a good, all good things, all good things, all good things come from him. Believers are encouraged to rely on God's provision and care, even in difficult times. Theologically, this verse underscores the, the, the nature of God as inherently good and the provider of all good things. It aligns with other biblical teachings that emphasize God's goodness and his desire to bless his people. In summary, Psalm 16, 2 is a powerful affirmation of God's sovereignty and the psalmist's dependence on him as a sole source of all goodness. It reflects a deep personal relationship with God characterized by trust, gratitude, and acknowledgement of his all-encompassing provision. This verse encourages believers to reflect on their own dependence on God and, and to recognize his goodness in our lives. So do you believe that all goodness comes from God? Do you believe that all the good things in your life, that God is the source? Do you believe that apart from him, there is no goodness in your life? Do you thank God for all the good things, all the goodness that you have? Do you recognize that he is the source of goodness in your life? Uh, this is something that we need to really understand about God's goodness. You can, you can give people credit and people can be good to you and people can do good things for you. But God is even the one that will motivate people to do good for you. I, I'm, I'm writing a new book called Double Favor. Um, and and I, I look at favor with God and favor with man. Double favor. Favor with God gives you favor with man. God's goodness will cause people to be good to you and kind to you. The source is still God. God can give you favor uh, with people, cause them to be good to you, bless you, help you, and, and you can thank them for it. But the source is still God. God is the one that causes even man to favor you and be good to you. So apart from God, I have no goodness in my life. All the goodness comes from God. And I praise God for that. I thank God for that. I recognize that. It brings you to a level of humility that apart from God, there is no goodness in your life. Apart, The scripture even says that God reigns upon the unjust like he does upon the just. Even God is good to people that don't know him. Even the unjust partake of God's goodness. And of course, the just do as well. And if we, get, if we recognize that, that it is the goodness of God that causes men to repent. It's the goodness of God that causes men to change. It's turning away from evil and turning to God because you recognize his goodness in your life. What a, what a powerful verse. Meditate on it. Read it. Psalm 16 too. Read Psalms 27, 13. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Memorize these verses, meditate on them, confess them, decree them, believe them, 
And let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for everyone that is watching tonight. I pray that you would give everyone a greater revelation of his goodness, that you'll open their eyes and cause them to see. And the Lord said, even now that I'm, I'm, I'm giving many of you a greater revelation of my goodness, my favor, my grace, my benevolence, uh, my kindness over your life. And as you receive goodness and thank me for goodness, I'll pour goodness upon you and I'll cause you to experience even more goodness in the months and years to come. I'll cause my goodness to touch you, your finances, your, your families, your ministries, your businesses, your relationships. I'll cause you to have good relationships, good friends, uh, good homes, good housing, good transportation, uh, good things that you'll enjoy because of my goodness. So Lord said, even as you study and meditate on my goodness and receive my goodness, I'll pour it out upon you abundantly. There'll be abundant goodness that I'm releasing in this hour. And many of you shall know abundance of grace and abundance of goodness and abundance of kindness and abundance of mercy and abundance of favor shall come upon your life. And I'll cause it to multiply. I'll cause it to increase and you'll take pleasure in my goodness and you receive from my bounty and my overwhelming blessing shall come upon your life. I will open the windows of heaven, the floodgates of heaven and cause my blessings <clears throat> and my goodness and my favor to pour upon you that you'll not have room enough to receive it. I'll cause the heavens to be open and goodness shall follow you all the days of your life. So believe in my goodness, receive my goodness, walk in my goodness and, and, and trust in my goodness and you'll see my goodness manifest in your life. Do not be afraid of the future. Do not be afraid of trouble or affliction that comes, but know that in the midst of that, my goodness will manifest in your life. Father, I pray and prophesy concerning your goodness tonight. Thank you for touching us and giving us a revelation of your goodness and of your mercy, your kindness and your favor. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget this book, The Good Land. Talking about goodness, God told Israel, I'm taking you to a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey. That's goodness. The Good Land, one of my favorite books, ordered at Amazon.com or ChristianBooks.com. There's some confessions and prayers in the books as well that you can confess and decree about the good land and walk and live in that good land and live in that good place. There is a place called good and there is a place called goodness and there is a place that you can live in where you'll experience good things. No good thing, no good thing, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Well, if you want to <clears throat> partner with me and what I'm doing globally, many of you know I do quite a number of things in poor countries, South Africa, outreach to street children, Liberia and other parts of Africa, di digging water wells for areas that don't have clean water. Um, we sow into those things. And if you want to help me do that or just be a blessing to what I'm doing in the ministry, then feel free to sow tonight. I've been decreeing Deuteronomy 111, the Lord make you a thousand times more, a thousand times more, a thousand times more. I've been decreeing financial multiplication that, that in July, you're jumping July, you're jumping to another level financially, your business, your accounts. I'm decreeing multiplication, favor, increase, blessing, prosperity, success. And if you want to partner with me, go to those giving addresses. Many are sowing seeds of 111 with the number 111 in it, representing Deuteronomy 111. The most common seed is just 1111. Some are sowing 111. Some are sowing 5111 or 2111. Um, there's even been a few that would really be a blessing to our projects that would sow 1011. Three, three ones in that number as well. And if you want to do that today, go to the giving addresses I've given above. Cash app at AJE Global, AJE Global, and PayPal at Apostle JE, the number one. PayPal is Apostle JE, the number one. Or you can Zelle 
at E-C-K-H-J-O-H-N at gmail.com. Again, those giving addresses, Cash App, A-J-E Global, PayPal at Apostle J-E, the number one, and Zelle at E-C-K-H-J-O-H-N at gmail.com. And for those who are sowing tonight or have been giving this month, again, I decree multiplied favor and let me decree multiplied goodness over your life. I decree good things are coming to you and you'll live in a good place and you'll live in a good land and you'll enjoy good things and God's goodness will overwhelm you. I pray for goodness in your finances, your family, your relationships, your accounts, your business, your ministry. I pray and decree that you'll have good relationships, good friends, uh, good land, good property, good health. Good things will be your portion um, even this year and in the years to come. So if you want to sow a seed, go to those giving addresses and sow it now. Thank all of those that would do it. If you're watching the replay, feel free to do it even after the broadcast is over.